Today, Karim Mokhtari is free to enjoy a stroll on the beach near Montpellier in southern France. But he spent a long time in prison for armed robbery that resulted in a death. And that wasn't all. In prison, he fell under the sway of a radical preacher who wanted to recruit him for terrorist attacks for the so-called Islamic State. I had no spiritual foundation. I didn't know who I was, where I came from, what religion I had. The preacher exploited this weakness to pull me into his orbit. Mokhtari's parents abused him. He landed in a detention home and began a typical criminal career. Prison was like criminal graduate school. An Islamic State recruiter began influencing him and telling him what he ought to do. He had a very dark look in his eyes. And he said, Karim, now you are a Muslim and you must defend Islam. You must kill the unbelievers, wherever you find them. The French state finds it difficult to counter Islamist radicalization in its prisons. Last year, it was decided to isolate the radicals from the other prisoners. But the decision wasn't implemented, in part because there just isn't room in the overfilled jails. Attorneys for victims of terrorism say the authorities are not fulfilling their responsibility. Something must be done now. Otherwise, people who are a risk, who persuade others of their radical theories, and who are extremely violent themselves, will continue to be sent to normal prison wards. There they are in contact with other inmates, and so radical Islamism will continue to spread. Mokhtari says separating radicals is not enough. The young men in prison should be prepared for life when they are released. We need to find out what makes these young men willing to die for one moment of intense existence. We have to show them how they can become useful, recognized members of society. In some prisons, like here in Osny near Paris, prisoners judged to be terrorism risks are under surveillance around the clock. The guards are supposed to find out who is really dangerous and should be isolated. A correctional officer who wants to remain anonymous says that's easier said than done. The most dangerous ones aren't those who pray the most or who practice their religion most devoutly. The most dangerous ones work in secret. They seem completely normal, even in prison. We look for little signs, what they read or watch on TV, and how they behave when exercising in the yard. The French authorities long tried to ban Islam as such from the prisons. Only in recent years have they begun hiring imams to teach inmates a peaceful form of Islam. Mokhtari says it was a Catholic prison chaplain who turned him around. I felt that not even God could forgive me for what I had done. The priest's words changed my life. If God tests you, it's because he loves you. You have the strength within you to master this test. I always wanted my mother to love me. And then someone says, there's a power that loves me more than people can love me. Mokhtari didn't convert to Catholicism. He wanted to find his own roots, so he learned about Islam and became a Muslim. Today, he works with prisoners. First, he tries to get them to accept that their prison sentence is justified. Then he helps them look for an apartment and a job when their sentence is over. Many regard Mokhtari as a wonderful exception, but still an exception. Looking at the psychological profiles of the IS recruits, you see how radical and brutal some of them are. You can't bring them back. Mokhtari is convinced he can't relapse into crime. But he says radicals in prison still have far too easy a time finding recruits for terrorism.